So we'll try to get them back on. Check one, two, sound check one, two. Good, thumbs up. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out to Timonium today. We are very proud, very proud of the work being done here, which has been described as a military-like operation by those going through our process. This location alone can scale up to deliver as many as 1,000 doses per hour. And we can and will open up additional sites across Baltimore County as they become needed to help our vaccination efforts. I'm joined today by Baltimore County's health officer, Dr. Gregory Branch, uh, who will share additional updates on Baltimore County's ongoing vaccine distribution efforts. I'm also pleased to be joined today by Sam Carroll, a Baltimore County resident who will be sharing her experience getting the vaccine right here at this site. I want to start by commending Dr. Branch and Deputy Health Officer Del Leister and their entire team for what I consider to be the best vaccine clinic operation in the state of Maryland. I especially want to thank and acknowledge Terry Sapp, the health department's emergency coordinator for his leadership here on site. You know, there have been countless news stories about vaccine distribution across the country, about whether it's going fast enough, whether there's enough vaccine, and whether the feds, the states, or local governments are working hard enough to vaccinate their residents. To be clear, Baltimore County and our operation here in Baltimore County is going exactly as it's been intended. This week, nearly 8,000 people will come through this site and receive their first doses. Another 600 will receive their second doses. And as I mentioned earlier, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we're able to do here in Baltimore County. That might be part of the reason why Baltimore County continues to lead the state in the number of residents who have received vaccines. As of this morning, 58,744 residents have received a first dose. That represents 7.1% of our population. And 20,221 of those have been administered by our health department right here at the Maryland State Fair. But while I am incredibly proud of the work that we're doing and the progress we've made, we still have a very long way to go. More than 150,000 people have already registered for vaccines through our online registry. 33,000 of those individuals are over the age of 75. More than 13,000 work in K-12 education. To date, We've received a limited supply of first doses from the state each week, typically between 5,000 and 8,000 doses. And we don't know how many doses we will receive for the upcoming week until Saturday. What we do know is the state has moved and authorized a movement into phase 1C. And we know that there are many residents in this group who are anxious to learn when they can have an appointment. We're asking individuals in that category to please be patient. We're still working through and prioritizing those in subgroup 1A and 1B, and we will begin to offer appointments to those in 1C as soon as we are able. As I said before, we have the ability to vaccinate more people more quickly, but we don't have the vaccine supply to do so. We and local government are at the end of the supply chain, and until that supply increases, more meaningfully, the pace of vaccinations will remain the same. Thankfully, President Biden announced just yesterday that the federal government is purchasing 200 million additional doses and will be sending millions of more doses to the states beginning next week. The president also announced they will begin telling states how much vaccine they will receive three weeks out instead of week by week, as has been the case in weeks prior. I'm hopeful that Governor Hogan and his team will in turn 
make more vaccines available to us and local government, and give us the same three-week look-ahead that the federal government will be providing to states. We in local government welcome this new effort from President Biden to ensure that more of our residents can be vaccinated, that they can be vaccinated sooner, and that they have a longer horizon to plan for the distribution of these vaccines. As we look forward to these additional doses with great anticipation, we continue to plan for future phases of our distribution efforts. We intend to open additional clinics on both the east and west sides of Baltimore County in the coming weeks. We're exploring transportation options for those individuals who do not have access to a vehicle. And we're planning to launch a campaign in the near future that will be targeted to our harder to reach communities and those communities that we know have reservations about receiving their vaccine. And today, we're also launching a new vaccine information page that includes a dashboard allowing our residents to track progress on key vaccination metrics. To access our vaccine dashboard or to add your name to the registry, you can visit www.baltimorecountymd.gov slash vaccine. If you are a senior or any individual who needs assistance, or you're not able to get support from a family member or trusted individual, or if you do not have access to the internet, you can call 311 for help. Our 311 team is ready to connect seniors with other staff or those who need assistance to be added to Baltimore County's vaccination registry. Our registry does remain open, so any resident who has not yet registered should do so. However, it's important to reiterate this point. Completing our vaccination registry does not create an appointment for a vaccination. After you register, once you become eligible and we have a vaccine available, we will reach out to you about how to schedule your appointment. And you must have an appointment to receive a vaccine. Please do not show up without an appointment because you will not be offered an opportunity to receive a vaccine. As we ask for your patience, your understanding, and your partnership in this challenging time, we also ask for your continued vigilance. Across the state, we are seeing a promising decline in cases. As of this morning, we had 27.9 cases per 100,000 residents in Baltimore County. And our positivity rate was 4.99%. This is the first time our positivity rate has been below 5% since early November. Our numbers have dropped since the post-holiday spike and that is good news. It's also a testament to how many Baltimore County residents have been and continue to do the right thing, have been doing and continue to do. But we want and we need to see our numbers continue to move in this positive trend direction. Because we still have neighbors getting sick, we still have neighbors who are dying from this virus. And even with the federal government's stepped up efforts to provide additional vaccines, it will still be months before everyone can receive one. Declining cases and the arrival of the vaccine should not be an excuse for letting our guard down. In fact, it means that we have to keep doing exactly what we have been doing. Wear your masks, avoid large gatherings, and keep six feet of distance when you venture out. We've asked a lot of our residents, and I'm grateful for their continued hard work to reduce the spread of this virus. Thanks to all of you from the bottom of my heart, just as I thank every employee and volunteer here from the bottom of my heart for their relentless efforts to support our residents. While you continue to protect yourselves, your loved ones, and your communities, you have my word, you have my word that we will continue to do everything we can to get vaccines in the arms of our residents as quickly as possible we will get through this together. With that, I'll turn things over to Dr. Gregory Branch for a few additional remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Mr. C.E., for your kind words. Before I start, I would be remiss if I did not thank our dedicated health department staff and my deputy health officer, Della Leister, for all of their hard work. Because of them, 
we are able to continue our aggressive battle against COVID on several fronts. Health and Human Services is on the job. They are the ones who are doing the heavy lifting. And this includes the COVID hotline team, manning the hotline seven days a week, much needed resources, our contact tracers, our outbreak teams, our COVID testing teams, and of course, our COVID vaccination team. Baltimore County Department of Health is on the job. But I must continue to remind everyone that this is a marathon and not a sprint. We will continue our battle against COVID for the foreseeable future. We can and we will ultimately win the war against our COVID enemy. However, however I need everyone to cooperate and get a vaccine. We will continue to vaccinate individuals as we receive the vaccine. The vaccine is safe and is very effective. The vaccine is safe and very effective. It's an armor against the most contagious disease. Now, how do you get a vaccine? You must first re um, register at the vaccine registry. Go on to baltimorecountymd.gov slash vaccine registry. You will then be contacted to schedule an appointment when vaccine is available and when we are serving your priority category. I especially encourage members of those communities hardest hit by this disease to go to the portal and register. We cannot forget that our African American members and Latinx communities have been disproportionately impacted by this pandemic. Members of these two communities continue to be hospitalized at large numbers, and far too often they succumb to this disease. Again, register baltimorecountymd.gov slash vaccine registry. In the meantime, I have to remind you to continue to practice the three W's. Wear your masks, watch your distance, and wash your hands. It's just that simple. Please do it for yourself, do it for your family, do it for your community. Please just do it. Mr. C? Thank, thank you, Dr. Branch. Uh, last but not least, I, we want uh, members of our Baltimore County community to hear from someone who has gone through this experience. So I want to thank, again, Sam Carroll, who is a Baltimore County resident, was here recently to tell her experience uh, at this site. Thank you to uh, County Executive John, Johnny Olszewski, Jr., and to Dr. Branch and also to all those here today who are accomplishing the mission of getting the vaccine in the arms. And I was invited to talk about my experience. Uh, I know there's great hesitancy out there with some people about coming to the fairgrounds, about what am I gonna find? How hard is it gonna be? How many hours do I have to wait? And I can tell you that you don't have to worry about a thing. Baltimore County government has it covered like no other. My husband and I were here last Wednesday, actually, a week ago, and got our first shot. And we came with our confirmation in hand and our IDs with some trepidation, not knowing what we would experience but it was an amazing experience. Everyone we encountered was smiling, was welcoming, had a job to do, and they were efficient. It was like a military operation and obviously continues to be like that. From the time we got to the parking lot until we got back in our car, it was literally 30 minutes. 15 of those minutes were spent in this area back here, waiting to make sure that we did not have an immediate allergic reaction. But while we were there, 
we were able to schedule our second appointment for our next shot, which is in two weeks. So what I tell those who are hanging back, we all have talked to neighbors in other states, counties, cities. We see it on the news every night. Please, we need to finish our mission. Our part of the mission is to register to get the vaccine. That is our part of the mission. Register, and as soon as the vaccines are rolling in, You'll get another email. That's how we did it. The second email will tell you now's the time to schedule your appointment. It's as simple as that. It is not a hard process. It takes two minutes to do the process, to register. But we must do our part. The other thing I would say is that if you have a senior in your family, their numbers have already been called, so they're eligible to get the shot. Maybe they need help. They'll push back. They'll tell you, oh, I'm taking care of it, or I've already done it, or I'm going to do it. Well, look over their shoulder and make sure that, in fact, they are registered. And or give them the instruction. Talk to them on the phone. If it's a neighbor, walk next door, knock on the door, see if they're registered. That is so important. And then follow up. Make sure they get the appointment, and maybe they need a ride. We're all in this together. The sooner we all get vaccinated, the sooner we can hug our grandchildren again, we can celebrate birthdays, we can go to football games, we can live life again. Please wear your mask and do your part. Thank you. Sure, it's Sam, S-A-M Miller. Uh, Kingsville, Maryland. Question? John, about how many people are here working this clinic? Uh, does that, do you break it down for vaccinators? And I see you have some uh, National Guard here as well. I defer to you, Doc, on that one. So usually when we have our clinics like this, we have approximately 110 people who are I'm working. I can get you the breakdown of who's who at, an, at another time but it's about 110 people who are working. Uh, what happens is the fact that I usually can do it with less people. However, when you have folks who are 75 and older, we have additional staff here who are helping them in the wheelchairs and stuff like that, and who are really helping them through this whole process. So you want to make it a little easier for some of our seniors. different amount every week and we hopefully find out um, by the Saturday before that week. Sometimes it's a little later but that's when we're supposed to find out. Is it frustrating to know that you should be doing more and vaccinating more people if you had more doses available? Well that's the whole piece. We would really like to be able to vaccinate as many of our residents as we can. We need more vaccine and so I hope and I pray that more vaccine is on the way. Well, we're very confident that folks will um, not lose their queue. People are concerned now, and the reason why is because we can't go down that queue and really call people in. If I'm getting about 5,000 to 7,000 vaccines per week, and I've got 150,000 people on that list. I'm obviously not going down that queue that quickly, right? So as soon as we're able to get more vaccine, we'll be able to move down the list and people will feel as if they're getting their vaccine. Trace, Georgia County had a situation where they felt like folks from outside of the county were finding a loophole in order to be able to register. Is that something that you're finding that's happening here, both North County or no? At this point now, uh, when, once you come and you have an appointment with Baltimore County, we're going to vaccinate you, right? These are vaccines from the federal government. And so we, we don't sit there and say, well, you're not from this county. You may work in Baltimore County. You may live in Baltimore County. And we're here to help you in Baltimore County.
I will say this to you. I've been doing this a long time. And I've been through many public health threats. And we're in this together. COVID vaccine does not know that it's in Pennsylvania versus Baltimore County or anywhere else. So therefore, we're really going to be there for people. And so I don't have that much of a concern about that because our goal really is to vaccinate as many people as we can vaccinate. And that will cut down on the transmission of this most debilitating disease. I'm seeing folks from 1A and 1B, predominantly at this point now, I'm trying to do the 75 and older, and we all working with the school system, right? I can tell you that when I get more vaccine. All right, thank you all. All right, then. All right, thank you all. Sure. Um, you may be impressed with the Jewish initiative, but you yeah. killed it. Yeah, don't